Marcus Martin with uh, Dangerous Kind, WildlifeRadio.com, Callie's Kingdom. I'm not Callie, as you can tell, but uh, this is Lucas. Lucas, how the hell are you? Pretty good. How are you doing, man? Doing great, man. And uh, welcome to Callie's Kingdom. I know it's probably a little homoerotic with a dude saying that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all good. Callie's on her way. She got stuck in traffic. She'll be here shortly. But uh, uh, Dangerous Kind, man, I really dig it a lot. It's, it's got a uh, really cool hook. Uh, even in who, me, for who's in the heavier music, I'm sitting there tapping my foot and everything. It's really cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, so tell us a little bit what got you started with uh, playing guitar, writing music, and whatnot. I started about the age of 12. I kind of fell into guitar because I uh, accidentally got into class in school, in middle school, and I started playing acoustic guitar, and I got to the point where, you know, obviously no one else there was going to do anything. So my dad got me a guitar, and he bought me a Stevie Ray Vaughan DVD because he really liked him when he was a kid. So I started watching that, and I was amazed by him. And I got, you know, I got an electric guitar. I started to get into Steve Vai, the, the more complex things, technically right. complex things. And, you know, almost seven years later, here I am. So Very cool. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely the influences you, <laughs> you want to you wanna have being a guitar player and all. I mean, oh, yeah, especially from Texas, you know. Everybody around here wears boots and plays blues. <laughs> big belt buckles, big hats, you know. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, have you always written your own songs? I uh, actually, it, Dangerous Kind is the first song I did with a songwriter. He actually, this is one of his things he had in the vault, and he kind of brought it out. And I was like, you know, this is mostly completed. I thought this is pretty cool. We could do some stuff with this. So we we offered it. We changed it. We did a lot of stuff. We rocked it up more because he does more pop songs. He's more of a pop writer, and you know, I like. I come from more metal and rock stuff, so we work well together because he brings all these, you know, sugar-coated hook stuff to my music. Right, a little diversity. Uh, yeah, so we brought that out, and we worked on this, and we got a pretty cool track. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, like I said, this is more of a poppy song compared to some of your instrumentals are pretty shredding, you know, have that Satriani yeah. sound and whatnot. Uh -huh. And uh, so, some of your influences, you already mentioned a few. Uh, who else did you grow up listening to? Uh, besides Stevie Ray, the Hendrix, big influence on me. Um, and the, really, the last record I bought was Audio Slave's last record. <laughs> They're one of my favorite bands. I think that's a great combination. I love what Chris Cornell does with the vocals and Tom Morello. He's not really a shredder, but but his big riffs and stuff. I mean, I really try to emulate that massive, yeah. repeated, you know, wall of sound kind of thing. Yeah, I really I like so. that. Well, that's cool. That's 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 someone you don't hear uh, listed as a as an influence very often, but it's very cool because yeah, most. Most guitar players have have the same old influences, you know, uh, Jeff Beck and Clapton oh, yeah. and, and, you know, that sort of thing. And No matter what your age, so some of them are pretty timeless. But uh, Morello, that's that's really interesting. That's cool. Yeah, he's more of a, he brings more of a modern sound to things. You know, he's the first guy that ever used that whammy pedal and that kind of thing. So that influenced me, too. And actually, if you listen to the, uh, the new Guns N' Roses record, um, Tom Morello definitely influenced the guy that's playing guitar. I don't remember his name, but... He goes nuts on the whammy pedal, total rip -off. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not it's not <laughs> Buckethead anymore. I forget who, uh, they, they've gone through so many uh, people for that album. What, That's 20 crazy. years in the I making? I think Zach Wilde played <laughs> one note, maybe at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> but that's another story altogether. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of old school as well as modern influences. Uh, what's your preference as far as style? Uh, probably... I would like, my, my, the way I write a song would be, I bet my, what I do with the drums, I, I like sequence drums played by a real drummer and the sequence drums in the background. I like a big hook, uh, a big riff, like they did in the 70s, mm -hmm. and Tom Morello did. Not, not I don't want to say southern rock, because Tom Morello is definitely not southern rock. No. But, you know, stuff like that. I like a, I like a guitar solo, and it has, to, it has to have, you know, a catchy chorus. That's so I def I like I you know I have to take stuff from everything to try to blend something new. Right, well, that's cool. And uh, I, I was looking on your uh, on your website and your bio and everything, and you played with a lot of uh, big names: Gary Hoey, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Soul Asylum. Uh, at such a young age, was it intimidating to to be up there with those guys? Uh, not particularly, because I practiced a lot before I got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but when when I start playing, when I started playing with guys like that, I had already, I mean, I had put in hours and hours and hours. So, and I knew what they did and who they were and what their tricks were, 
and all this stuff. So all I could do really was learn from them in person, you know. So I wasn't really ever. I mean, it was, it was fun jamming with them. It was a great experience for me to learn when I was a kid. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm a big fan of Gary Hoey. Uh, I, I remember that uh, the video he had years ago uh, on MTV when MTV actually played music. Yeah. Uh, the one we had all that. I think he had like a laptop hanging from around his neck, and he had all kinds of equipment around him. I can't, that was like his one big single that mm-hmm. people heard of. Was it um, maybe Hocus Pocus? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the one. It, yeah. Yeah, and then I on, I listen to Opie and Anthony on satellite radio a lot, and they have him on during Christmas time to play all his yeah. Christmas tunes. Oh yeah, I uh, love in the studio, Christmas man. Stuff. That's really good. Yeah, that's some, that's some really cool stuff. I love the Mr. Grinch tune. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> everything he does is cool. I played with him at that. Uh, at Antone's, it's a big club in Austin where Stevie Ray uh, slept there when he was a kid when he first moved to Austin. And we played at their, I think, oh, I don't know, 38-something anniversary maybe. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. That's sweet. Um, let me see. So what uh, shows, festivals, I, I know they have a lot of big ones down down south and all. Uh, what what kind of festivals you played in? I played, the first one I did was the uh, Lake Austin Blues Festival. And that was, it's a, it's a massive, oh, it's so big. They, they rent, like, an entire RV park and clear it out and then assemble this gigantic stage right on the lake. And then wow. people can, they actually play the music so loud that people on the other side of the lake sit over there with binoculars and listen because it's so loud for the people on the lake. Uh, yeah, and big bodies of water, the sound carries really well. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. So, so. It, that, that's, that's a really cool event they do. That's and awesome. There's a, uh, there's a, on FM radio here in Fort Worth, in Dallas, there used to be, he's actually not on anymore, but he was a, he had the biggest talk, talk, uh, show in Dallas, Fort Worth, like over everything, AM, FM, and everything. And he had this uh, organization that when a uh, fallen police officer or a, a fireman, when, when something happens, they donate, right. in, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to their family. So. That's that's really cool. And we did an event with them at Nokia Theater here, which is it's owned by oh that that AEG Live or AIG Live or whatever that is. That oh, okay, big, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's it's about a six thousand seat venue, so that was a very cool gig. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, the Paul Mitchell campaign. Uh, tell us about that. I actually, it's funny because I just mentioned the Lake Austin Blues Festival. I was there when I was twelve, and that that's that was like my first major gig, and. Uh, the owner of Paul Mitchell Systems, Mr. DeJoria, his wife was there because she's a big fan of blues music, and she she uh, she collects uh, old Les Pauls and stuff, so she's pretty neat. But she was there, and I just happened to uh, be there, and she wanted to take a picture with me because I had just gotten off stage. So we took a picture, and the funny thing is that was the only picture taken of her at the event that Paul Mitchell sponsored, so I got in the... Austin Observer or whatever the local <laughs> magazine down there is. So that was pretty cool. So I, we took that, and also one of my friends, he is the next-door neighbor of Mr. DeJoria, the guy who owns Paul Mitchell Systems. So we knew him, and I found out about this uh, campaign they did. for uh, It's against animal cruelty, and it's to help the environment. It's called Head for Change. And Paul Mitchell's really cool anyway, a cool company, because they do no animal testing. They use no animal byproducts in any of their hair stuff, which is pretty cool. There are almost no companies that do that. Yeah, so I started nice. looking into this, and I saw that they make these videos, and they have these people you know, as uh, endorsers to, to help with this campaign. So I got with, uh, with a little entertainment group, and we made this, U- this YouTube video. It was about a minute long, and it was me like morphing like ten times playing these different <laughs> styles, and it was for this Head for Change campaign. And Mr. DeJoria saw it and liked it, and they invited me to do the official campaign uh, this last, I it's almost been a year now, uh, March of 2008 is when I did it. And I, I got on the, uh, the site and in the magazines and print and the stuff they did in about October last year. Oh, very cool. Is that the video still, the one, the original one you did, the morphing one, is that still available online? That's still, it's still on YouTube. Uh, it's probably, you could probably find it on my page on YouTube. I think I have a profile page. You can find it on there. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely want to check that out, and uh, I'll find it, and I'll give out the, uh, the, search, for, the search terms or the title of it to uh, the listeners in a bit. Um, all right, I'm going to play a couple more tunes of yours. Okay. Um, let's play some Flat Spin. That's uh, instrumental, right? Yeah, that's one of the Shredder ones. All right, cool. That's definitely what I want to hear then. Let's, uh, this is Lucas Martin, 
Flat Spin. Check them out. Lucas Martin Guitar at MySpace.com or LucasMartin.com.